Take charge of your thoughts. Take charge of your life. Psychologist, author, speaker, musician, former professor, and the host of Love and Life, Dr. Karen Anderson Abril. Welcome to Dr. Karen Love and Life. I'm Dr. Karen Anderson Abril. If you're a single woman out there in the dating jungle and you're on Instagram, you may have heard of the Fairy Godfather. And if you haven't heard of the Fairy Godfather, it's my honor and privilege to introduce him to you during this episode. And spoiler alert, he absolutely earns his name because he provides what we women so desperately need the male perspective when it comes to dating and relationships. Because all too often, and I was of course guilty of this, talking about guys over brunch with my besties, trying to analyze texts, trying to get into the guy's mind. And the experts in this space also play into this. I mean, how many books have been written by women who claim to have the secrets to the male mind? Well, no longer do we have to go to women to find out what men are thinking. We can go directly to the source. And that's one of the many benefits of having our very own fairy godfather watching over us. So we'll get into so much more about how the fairy godfather came to be and how he and I connected and the collaborations we've been doing. And even when we met up IRL in London last summer, but most importantly, How TFG's witty and wise posts can help us all manage the madness that is modern dating. TFG and I had so much to talk about. We're going to roll out the conversation in a series. So part one begins now. So Fairy Godfather, welcome to the program. Hello, thank you for having me. So I I do feel very privileged to have you on my podcast because... As much as you're out there on Instagram, you're still a bit of an enigma. You know, you're not always making these public appearances or hopping on people's podcasts. So I thank you so much for coming on mine. Yeah, it's my pleasure. My pleasure. (laughs) So let's jump into some questions because I have a lot of questions. I know some of these answers because we've actually had the chance to meet in real life last year, which was absolutely a treat for Love sure. That. Yeah, we had a great time in London for a couple of days and I hope that will be the first of many appearances that I you will, so. yeah, that we can connect. Um, but let me just get to some questions that I would imagine you have over 40,000 followers right now. Mm-hmm. So I would imagine these women know bits and pieces based on how long they've been following you and which posts they've read. But let's get to some of the questions that they might not know uh, and get some answers that they might not know about you. So, like I said, you're pretty much an open book on Instagram. But for those who haven't heard the backstory, how did the fairy godfather come to be? Well, I'll take you all back to uh, 2011. I was uh, was just on most dating sites, you know, just chatting to women. Some of them befriending, some of them dating. And I met a woman on there. And we'd, we'd become friends and I was giving her online dating advice. And then after a while of chatting, we'd become better friends and we swapped phone numbers. And we was going to meet up because she had some work that I could do for her, uh, voluntary. And so we exchanged numbers. And then just one day out of the blue, I just sent her a text message. Inadvertently, that text message saved her life because she was driving to her destination to end her life. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't know about this at the time. So anyway, to cut a long story oh. short, we um, we did meet up and, and we I gave her a big hug and, and she said to me something I'll never forget. She said, you've got a gift. And I think that was the ignition, you know, as if to say, okay, well, I've got a gift, you know, <laughs> and then you sort of, you go with it. And then, yeah. all the, and then all the ideas come, which were, um, you know, oh, I'm going to get a dating website. Because this was now 2012, so I had a great idea to uh, it. was called, I even bought with the main name, check this out, it was ishegenuine.com. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. so, and this was a, uh, a website, it was going to be a website where you could verify men and, and they'd be put on the, this data and women would verify them, give them a rating out of 10, etc. And any sort of red flags that would come up, they'd also be put onto this database. And that was the idea. 
uh, sadly, I, I couldn't get funding for it, and so the, uh, the dream lay dormant for about about four more years. And then I wrote an article on internet data, and I put that on Twitter. This was 2016, and that was picked up by a lady who worked for Elite Daily. For those who don't know what Elite Daily is, they're, they're, a, they're a newspaper, an online newspaper, uh, through millennials. And they asked me to be a contributor, which means I would do some work for them on internet dating, and then they would publish it. Anyway, I wrote this article, and it, it didn't it didn't make it. It was it was left on the cutting room floor. With uh, <laughs> the editor left their notes like um, short and choppy sentences and uh, no direction. So I was like, oh, "Fuck you, mm. Lee Daily. I'll 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 find my own audience." And so I started the Instagram account, and the rest is the city's history. So that's how, that's how it all started. I love how this word of you've got a gift for this spurned you on mm. to really pursue. I mean, this woman is sadly on the way to kill herself. You intervene. And I mean, it's all a little bit kind of magical and almost like a fairy tale, which makes sense because you're the fairy godfather. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and I still speak to the, uh, the lady as well. You know, she follows, she, she sort of says, you know me, I go under the radar. So, so she, was, she sees what's going on, but she's very low key. She never comments, she never likes anything. And, you know, she's doing okay, and she gives my permission to, you know, if I ever mention anything about it, I've always got permission. And I did eventually, you know, work for her. I was teaching their disadvantaged kids with her, because that's part of their business was doing that. So I went and helped her out for, uh, for a couple of weeks, and, you know, doing that. And, you know, that's enjoyable as well. So, yeah, we, 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 did, get, we, did, get to, uh, we did get to meet, so that was good. I love it. Plus, I love that you took that disappointment with the Elite Daily article and you said, you know what? I know that I have something to say. Yeah. You start to own it, you know, which, which is not easy to do at first. We go, do I have something to say? I think I do. And then, you know, the website didn't take off at first because you didn't get the funding, but you persevere, which I love. Yeah, well, and now you have 40,000 women who are thanking you for persevering. Well, I was, uh, I was sort of like, I'm quite adamant, you know, if I, if I think I'm right, then I'm, I'm usually right, you know, I'm one of these people, you know. Was, <laughs> so the fact that they, uh, I knew that someone had seen something that they liked from the league there. The, the editor wasn't the person who spotted me. So I, I knew that it was someone who knew something or had seen something. And then, I mean, the first year, if I, I actually look back at my work on the, on the Instagram account, and I actually, I had to cringe. You know, when I look back at, after a year, every year I look back on the previous year, the work that I was doing. And each time I cringe a little bit just because of how far it progressed, you know. And meeting someone like yourself as well made that, propelled me into a better place because in the beginning I was just quoting and that was it. I was just quoting and, you know, doing that three times a day. Then as you're progressing, you meet an amazing doctor like yourself. You're, you start learning a lot more and you think, right, okay, well, can we learn about the science behind it and stuff like that? So, so yeah, it's just all about learning. And although you may have started just knowing with your experience, you later go on to know a lot more because you're just learning as you go along. Well, we all, when we start something like this, and frankly, there was a huge learning curve for everyone with Instagram. And Instagram has evolved into something that even the people who founded it had no idea it would go in this yeah. direction. But I mean, I can't take all the credit for your scientific <laughs> mind because you love you love that stuff, yeah. and that's one of the things that that you do. You're such a little psych nerd well, we're and science geek, which I think <laughs> completely. <laughs> but I think that that's you. You love to ground your your what you know to be true. You you know it, and then you go, okay, I bet you there's some science to back that up, or you see some science and you go, oh wow, that applies to dating, yeah. whether women realize it or not, like the halo effect. Yeah. It's a social psych term and it's, it could apply to a lot of situations, but you, you see it and you go, that's what women are yeah. doing. And it's all, that's why they're getting in trouble. And it's also a case of getting uh, psychology, theories, and um, science all combining together. So you can mix dopamine mm -hmm. with the scarcity principle, but also with psychology, you know. So you can mix all these theories, psychology, and the, the chemistry of it together. So you might have like three TED Talks that you've watched and you can uh, join the dots with them all 
and come up with your own sort of theory based upon three other theories by other people. So, so yeah, it's great to um, actually be able to see it from a dated perspective. Say maybe they just see it as a relationship sort of thing or, or their own little project. I remember seeing Dawn Masler, she was talking about how we fall in love, how we all fall in love. And uh, then I can link that to something else and turn it into something to do with dating, like why men are doing what they're doing now and how how we all fall in love and why people aren't maybe falling in love as, as much as they used to do or as fast as they used to do. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's all great to um, do the research on these things rather than just, you know, spit out some quotes here and there. Right. And I think that's one of the many things that sets you apart from other folks in the field. And I am good with anybody getting help from wherever they can get help. But I know that the way my mind works, I like that you back up your opinions and thoughts with some psychology, with some research. And then also you you provide a male perspective. You know, there's a lot of women <laughs> who are, there's women out there writing books about the male mind. Like, this is how men think, yeah. ladies. And I've always thought, <laughs> even when I was single, I always thought, why would I go to a woman to tell me what a man thinks? Yeah. Yeah, that, <laughs> that makes no sense. So you're really needed. And your vantage point is very straight talking. Now I've learned, having gotten to know you, that apparently... Individuals from the northern part of England are a little bit more straight talking. They're known to be straight talking. So this comes by your culture as well as your personality. Yeah, but I your think, straight talk to women yeah. gives them what they need. Yeah. And you've, but you've also got to be able to you know, know how to deliver that sort of uh, straight talking as well. So I've seen a few sort of people just sort of say, women, you're in the wrong. This is how it should be. But we're not taking into accountability of the men as well. The men are like the mm -hmm. might be the, the main uh, problem, but some accounts will just say, "Women, you're doing this wrong. You should be doing this wrong." But what they're doing wrong will only apply to maybe ten percent of the men who actually are interested in them on a long term basis. The other ninety percent just want sex with them or a short term relationship. So the advice that they're giving is only applicable to ten percent of the men, whereas they're saying it's all the women's fault. So the women can be applying the advice, uh, the advice from these people to the 100% or all of the men, but it's only going to work with 10% because the other 10, the other 90% aren't interested. So it's, um, it's always a case of saying, okay, well, you're a little bit in the wrong. <laughs> men are mostly wrong. So if you look at my advice, you know, there will be a lot about, you know, men being this and watch out for this, watch out for that and don't be doing this, don't be doing that. And maybe one in 10 plus will be about, accountability, self-awareness and things like that because I feel as though that ratio sort of reflects on the um, dating pool that we see today. Well, the dating pool is, you know, because so many of your followers, I know because I see their comments as well, they are frustrated. They feel that the dating scene today is quite different. And what I hear from you is that, yes, probably there are different realities than our grandmother's time, but also, women are are taking advice that they assume applies to all men, and you're reminding them that, okay, a lot of these guys that you may meet, they're really looking just for wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, or yeah. they're looking for a short-term relationship. So all your strategies that you are applying to these guys really will only work for the ones that truly want that long-term relationship. Exactly. Okay. Um, but, but there's ways of sort of finding out which men are at 10%. Uh, in fact, it's a lot less than ten percent. But I was just using that as an example. You know, I don't want to give anyone, a, 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 you know, grandiose ideas of, of, of it being ten percent. It's a lot less. But you know, the good men out there, the advice, you know, you know, don't have sex so so early. You know, that's that's the main one. You know, I, I think that what happened was um, Tinder. When Tinder exploded onto the scene, I started using it in two thousand and twelve then all of a sudden, everyone becomes abundant, okay? So before that, it was okay with internet dating, and then Tinder come on the scene, and everything was all right. It was just like a bloodbath. <laughs> so, yeah. so what happens is, is men can pick and choose whichever woman they want over the swipe of a finger. But women know this, so there's competition. Now, to get to beat the competition, they feel as though they may have to give what's not been earned, whether that they trust sex money, anything, just to keep that man, which is which is the wrong way because primarily the chase is, is sex, you know. 
the long term part comes later on, but if you give up the sex too soon, then then it's it's all works in a subconscious level, you see. So it, mm-hmm. it's you know, but if a woman wants to do that, then great. I'm just I just give them the options to say if you do that, you sort of lessen the chances of of it being a long term relationship. Well, what we also say is that if they go for like a coffee on the first day and then they keep at all the dates for the first month in the public eye, then that is not something that a fuckball will do. They're not going to do that. With, like I said, they always look for the easiest path of resistance. You know, so <laughs> what they're doing is, is they're, they're sort of saying, okay, well, am I going to really bait this woman, take her out, you know, spend my money, time and effort on this woman if I'm not getting sex? Well, yes, if it's a long-term relationship it's looking for. But no, if it's looking for sex, it's not economically viable. So they're not gonna, they're not gonna do it. And that's, that's why I suggest, you know, keeping the first four or five days in the public eye. Well, what I love too is that you're giving some real tangibles because we don't know when we meet a guy for the first time if he's interested in long-term or short-term. Mm-hmm. But what we can do is watch his response to our behavior. Like you're saying, if I continue to have coffee dates, if I'm not <laughs> letting him stay the night at my house right away, I'm mm-hmm. going to learn pretty quickly because the one who's not interested in anything long-term and legitimate with me is going to fall off pretty quickly. Yeah. So it's a way to just protect your heart and protect yourself. And so you give this, like, I love that when you say, don't give what hasn't been earned. Mm-hmm. And that's a real great pithy kind of mantra that a woman can lock into and hang on to. And you also, even though you're saying these guys are out there and all they want is sex, but you're also reminding women at the same time, you have a nice balance between, like this, like I said, the straight talking, like this is what's going on. And also, but hey, ladies, don't give up hope because there are good guys out there. And you and I had a pretty powerful experience just very recently where one of your followers who then followed me just yeah. let your words sink in. And she said, I finally believed the good guys were out there. And yeah, it was, it's, yeah, it's go those, ahead. Uh, it's those eureka moments, you know. And yeah. yeah I, get, I get them quite often, you know, just the realization of finally, you know, finally. So she uh, had DM'd me then and said, TFG finally, his words finally made me have that, like you said, a eureka moment. And she said she could feel her whole energy change. Her Just this weight was lifted off her shoulder. And she put it this way, which I loved. She said, I finally realized if I exist, he exists. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's empowering as well. Very empowering. Yeah. Hey, Black Coffee Drinkers. Love and Life's newest sponsor, Drink Now, is about to change your world. I'm a black coffee drinker, and so I know what you've been going through. You're burning your tongue, you're scalding your mouth, you're having to wait 40 minutes before you can even take a sip of your black coffee. By the time your coffee is cooled down enough that you could drink it, your muffin or your donut is already long gone. I know. I can't wait to eat that donut either. But now there's a solution. The Drink Now Perfector takes scalding hot coffee down to a drinkable 140 degrees in just 20 seconds without watering your coffee down. Learn more about Drink Now at drinknow.com and on Instagram at underscore drink underscore now underscore. This quarter, Love and Life lends a hand to 11th Candle Company. All proceeds from the sale of my book, Single is the New Black, Don't Wear White Till It's Right, will go to 11th Candle Company's Legacy Foundation. To hear more about the incredible work Amber Runyon is doing to help women escape sex trafficking, please take a listen to my podcast interview with her. It's episode 42, How Does a Candle Company Combat Human Trafficking? 11th Candle Company. Check them out at 11thcandleco.com and be sure to use promo code TAKECHARGE to receive 20% off your entire purchase. So we've talked a little bit about what separates the fairy godfather from some other experts and folks in the field who are giving advice. But what do you see as your unique role in this space? Well, uh, you know, there's a, there's a few different points. And what I actually do is I follow all of the the, uh, the major people who do this type of thing. Um, you know, if they've been doing it for, like, say, 10 years or five years and have over, say, 20,000 followers, then I follow them. And then if they're missing something or they're missing a trick, then I go, okay, well, 
that needs to be said. That needs to be spoken about. You know, cause I found a lot of them don't talk about um, when to take a break. Okay, we, we, mm-hmm. which we've spoken about loads of times. You know, it, it's yeah. a huge deal. You know, if somebody, if somebody needs to take a, a break. They need to take a break from dating. That is, you know. So, oh, you know, yeah. yeah. You know, so if they need to take a break from dating, if it's become all consuming, then they need to take a break. And you need to sort of like build themselves up again, learn yourself work and all the other things that we talk about on the Sunday. You know, so that's that's one thing that I talk about. People don't talk about it because it doesn't get likes, it doesn't get comments. <laughs> the same with the safety advice I get. I do that once a month I give the safety advice and it's there for all to mm-hmm. see in the highlights. Um, these people they don't, safety is boring as fuck, right? No fucker likes, no, nobody likes, listen, nobody likes to listen to safety advice. I used to be a safety advisor, okay? So I sort of know how popular or unpopular it is. So people don't talk about it because it doesn't get likes, it doesn't get engagement, people aren't really bothered. I talk about it because I saw the duty of care. You know, if I'm sending people mm-hmm. on dates, I want to make sure that they're not making uh, mistakes. It can cause them problems. You know, women women die every year from going on dates and maybe mm-hmm. go into a hotel room or going around to a guy's house for the first night. You know, it's or watch or leaving the drink unattended. You know, it's this is why I talk about the coffee date as well. It's, it's less likely to be spiked. You know, if, if you're in a pub mm-hmm. or a bar or a club, then it's easy for them to slip you a drink, something in your drink. And it'd be a case of them, mm-hmm. oh, she's just drunk, you know, I'm taking her home type thing, and everyone being okay with oh, it. Oh, yeah. But if you're in a Starbucks or another coffee shop, you know, it's, it's pretty hard to explain, and that thing won't go unnoticed. So, yeah, there's, there's many different reasons why I talk about the safety. But like I say, I used to work in it, so it's sort of ingrained in me to actually want to talk about it. It's another reason why a lot of my uh, advice is all a control measure. And, not 100%, like, no advice is. But it, that's one of the things that I'll talk about. But like I say, it's because I'll watch them. Another thing as well is what we spoke about before, about the psychology. My own experiences as a man who who didn't want a relationship and was dating women who maybe did and not seen that just me saying, I don't want a relationship, sort of didn't register in their brain. They were just saying, no, they were just thinking, I will change your mind. And this is why I tell mm-hmm. the women now, if intense, intentions don't match, if it's, if it's known, then it needs to end there because she'll never change his mind. And I'm living proof of that. So they need to take that on board. Yeah. Not, not a lot of people talk about intent. Well, that's another thing that I talk about. It's my own experiences. And like we said earlier about the chemistry as well, and different theories, as well as, um, well, the, uh, the DMs. You know, I've answered every single DM for three years now. Well, every DM that I've seen, I've answered. And that can be, on average, about 80 women a day. But, um, but yeah, it's about 80 a day. And then there's all every comment, I guess every comment I see, I will say what, what I see because obviously when I go to sleep, women comment and they might comment on the post, post from yesterday or the day before. I, mean, I can't keep track of every post. But if I see it, right. I reply. Um, nobody does that. The only, pe- the only time people mm-hmm. do that is when they've got a book coming out or when they're trying to sell mm-hmm. something. You know what I mean? It's typical <laughs> salesman. So whereas yeah. they do it when they're selling a book or when a program's coming out, I do it 24-7, 365, no days off for three years. That, that's, that's, I think that's the main thing is making it personal, along with all the communities yeah. I've built, you know. So I remember two years ago, I, I built loads of uh, groups in Facebook, about 60, all with 15 women in, because back then you could only have 15 in a group. And, uh, and I, there were all types of different groups. There was like a group for dating, a group for relationships, there was a sex, a music, books, everything. <laughs> and I put these women into all these different groups that they wanted to be in. And, and some of them are still going now, and they've become good friends. Some of them have met. The other group is... The Facebook group, you know, which is like the PS de resistance and the one that alleviates the pressure on my DM. So if a woman comes to me with like 10 pages worth of her life to read and she wants an opinion, then 
I don't obviously have time to, to read all of that, and I just let her know. I say, listen, you know, I, can't, I don't have time to read all of this. Like, if you want, like, a second opinion, you can always put it onto the Facebook group, which is also a private. No men are, in, uh, no men are allowed onto, into that group. Um, so they, they can put their question or their scenario into the group, and then that can be answered there. Um, how well, I don't know, but it'll be better than their own, just having their own opinion. It's actually pretty remarkable how much personal time and attention you give and talk about building community, which is, you know, if you go to someone's seminar, they'll say, well, what you want to do with your Instagram is build a genuine community that's of engaged followers. And I'm sure when you started, you did not go to any seminars. You had no, no idea of it. You just knew that if you were going to do this, you were going to be genuine. You were going to put yourself out there and you were going to be there for these women. And I'm just like, as you're talking, I'm thinking it is so genuine. I mean, you know that in Toronto last mm-hmm. fall, I was up there to appear on a radio program called Single in the City that's hosted by Laura Bellata. But of course, I'm going up there and you have so many yeah. of your followers who now have, have met me through you. And then I said, hey, I'm going to be in Toronto. And these women are like, what? We got to get together. And I was like, yeah, we got to get together. So and then we, uh, we, we had you, uh, join <laughs> us through, uh, Insta Live or whatever we did. I don't know. It was a live, it was yeah, a it was live through, feed, um, wasn't it? On, I think an Instagram. It was live. a live feed through our DMs, I think, yeah. is how we did it. I didn't, someone knew how they, I think maybe Alana knew yeah. what she was doing. So, but it was fantastic. And I looked around me thinking, oh my gosh, I would not know these women, but for you. And you respond to everybody, which I don't even know how you do at this point with 40,000 followers. That seems a little insurmountable. Fairy magic. <laughs> Fairy magic. <laughs> some, some women do actually say, they do. am I talking to you? Am I talking to the fairy godmother? Yeah. Man? It's like they think that I've got like a team of people sort of like, you know, working for me. Yeah. That's not the case. You know, I wish it was. It's just, just me sat on the couch just typing. You see, I learned to, to do to to speak to so many women back and forth by the years of internet dating I did previously to it. So what you do is while while you send a message to one, you're replying to another or two more. So while they're thinking of their response, you, you, you're speaking to everyone else, you know, so you can you sort of like just go, you don't sit there and wait for them to reply. You sort of go from one to the next, to the next, to the next, and that's how you can manage to keep up with everyone. And I've actually full on, full blown conversations with three or four women at once and this is why I say to the women, when you get a, a good morning text that says good morning and there's nothing else that surrounds it, um, then, you know, throughout the other days, then, you know, I wouldn't get too excited about that because, you know, I used to send those to, to many women at once. Right. Um, so, yeah, those type of messages should always be posted by a good paragraph or a phone call in the evening, you know, not just in the morning, good morning or good night. You know, what you're wearing at 12 o'clock at night, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the, um, right. Yeah, there just needs to be a little bit more to uh, communication than a good morning text. And this is why I, what I do is I see these quotes on Instagram and the boil my piss, I'll see them and I'll be like, you know, good morning texts uh, are what it's all about. And, <laughs> you know, all these other quotes. And I rip them to pieces just because what it is is someone will see that and they'll take that as advice. And they'll, and then they'll be, they might even hold themselves accountable, they'll hold the, the person accountable. So they're like, oh, the post, the post said it, you know, so it must be right. Well, obviously not. You're just pulling back the veil a little bit and letting women know, don't be putting a whole lot of weight into a good morning text because the reality is, even a nice little paragraph good morning text, he could copy and paste that and send it to seven other women. Yeah. Well, what I used to, what I used to do was, uh, my, always my, my first message to a woman it was always a, a paragraph and I'd just change the name and then I'd add a PS at the bottom. So, you know, there'd, there'd be a good chunk of it would be copy and paste and the, it might, she might have a little dog, so called PS, love your dog, you know, but the actual paragraph would copy and paste. Right. You know, so the women need to sort of like be asking the right questions at the right time. Um, asking the, the right questions at the wrong time, you know, that's, that's also a bad idea. But, you know, I go through, I go into depth for that in, in, um, on my profile, you know, and give step by step instructions on how to do it. That wraps up part one of my conversation with the fairy godfather. 
Join us for part two, where he explains what he means by asking the right question at the right time, as opposed to the right question at the wrong time. We also talk about which bits of TFG wisdom women don't want to hear. We review some terminology from TFG's dating dictionary, and we find out what keeps him going seven days a week, 365 days a year for three years now. The love and life hack for this week is everyone needs a fairy godfather and you've got one. Follow him on Instagram at the fairy godfather. Take charge of your thoughts. Take charge of your life. This is Dr. Karen Anderson Abril. Thanks so much for joining me today. And also a huge thank you to all of you who are subscribing to the podcast and providing reviews and sharing the episodes with others. It means so much to me. Thank you so much. Dr. Karen Love and Life is produced by Tim May and host and executive producer, Dr. Karen Anderson-April.